aquí So some of the some of the work I've been involved in now, uh, which is um, joint work with um, uh, Tom Malone at MIT and Anita Woolley at, at Carnegie Mellon, uh, is looking at uh, the concept of collective intelligence. And the way we're looking at collective intelligence is um, measuring the intelligence of a team or a small group of people. So nowadays in business, in science, in basically every kind of organization and endeavor there is, more and more important work is done by by people working together as groups. Partly that's just because of the complexity of what we do is, is larger than it than it used to be. Um, even in science, multi-authored articles are becoming you know more and more the norm. Uh, and in psychology, there's a long tradition of research measuring the intelligence of individuals. I mean, it's been known for over 100 years, for example, that people who do well at one particular kind of cognitive task tend to do well at other tasks as well. So people who are you know good at mathematical reasoning tend to have above average vocabularies as well. Of course, the correlation is not perfect, right? We all know people who are not that great verbally, but really good you know, at math and people who are the opposite. But across the broad spectrum of people, they, they correlate positively. And that's where the concept of intelligence comes from. Someone who's smart, someone who we regard as smart, sort of generally does better in, in cognitive things than, um, than someone else. Well, we found in our research that this is true of teams as well. We created teams in the lab of research volunteers and had them work together on a bunch of tasks. And some teams just did better across the board than other teams did. Uh, exactly what you find with individuals taking IQ tests, we found when teams took this kind of team IQ test that we came up with. So we would say, you know, some teams just have higher collective intelligence than other people. Where I think it gets more interesting than that is when we look at what factors distinguish the teams with higher collective intelligence from the teams with lower collective intelligence. One of the most interesting ones we found um, was that teams with higher collective intelligence tend to have more women. Um, so generally speaking, adding adding women, at least in our research, you know, in, in our studies, having more women on a team made a team um, more collectively intelligent. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can sort of take any team that's operating in your organization right now and add a couple of women onto it and, and they'll get smarter. They might. Um, but it does suggest a direction for, for exploration and something to think about. The other one is, is um, social intelligence. So the, the, indi the social intelligence of the individual members of the team turned out to be really important. So having people on your team who are better at decoding facial expressions, who are better at understanding other people's um, beliefs and emotions and what other people are thinking um, really seems to improve the collective intelligence of the group. And one reason for that might be that they need to spend less time communicating information about those uh, kinds of things if they're quicker to pick it up themselves. They can spend more time and uh, more efficiently focus on solving the tasks at hand and, and being productive and, and not or have to might, exchange that kind of information. I might make better choices in how I engage you about a particular issue. Sure. If you know, if you have, a, if you're better at knowing what I know and knowing how I'm likely to react to different things. We'll be more we'll be more productive together, and that's an interesting ingredient for collective intelligence because uh, if it's not something we can teach people easily to do, we can certainly look you know to compose teams and set the conditions for teams to work together that um, you know make it possible for uh, members to yeah, express you know better social intelligence and to find better patterns of, of working together. Uh, another pattern we found was that when when uh, the individual members of the team sort of make more equal contributions, when they each speak about the same amount of, of time or when they alternate speaking well, then you get higher collective intelligence. Now, that doesn't mean you could sort of go in and impose a rule. Like at our next meeting, everyone's going to speak once and then we're going to go around the beginning again. That might be artificial. That might not work. But across the teams in our research studies, that was a characteristic that, you know, that, that seemed to help. We haven't tested whether it's prescriptive yet, because all the studies that we've done 
Um, they, they do involve getting, you know, subjects into the lab and randomly creating the team. So it's, it's not as though we're studying existing teams who succeed and comparing them to existing teams who fail, kind of like comparing Apple to some, right. you know, uh, you know, some third tier company in the same industry. Right. We're creating all these teams from scratch. The people don't know each other. We don't have any reason to think that this won't generalize to other kinds of real world teams. But we haven't yet run the experiments where we, you know, impose a rule saying, here's how you're going to communicate or something like that. Um, and that's definitely needs to be done to see whether it generalizes. We don't want to have the illusion of cause, you know, mess up our mess up our own research in that way. But it's, it's this kind of research, I think, is good at finding you know hypotheses and ideas for what, you know, for what can be done with real, with real teams.